coming up in Ms. Tastic. Artastic on TPT to find hundreds and hundreds of art lesson plans and resources that you can use in your classroom. They're all easy to use, kid friendly, engaging, and fully prepped so you can say bye bye to the stress and hello to success. Now let's head on in to this episode. Hi there, I'm Ms. Artastic, and today we're going to learn all about the element of art texture, which is the visual implied surface of an object, right? It's the actual surface of an object in an artwork. So if it's a sculpture, it's the actual physical texture or texture might be the implied surface of an object. What something might feel like if we were to touch it or were able to touch it in a painting or a drawing. We can't actually touch the apple in a drawing. We can only touch a paper. However, we might be able to think that the apple looks or might feel like very smooth, right? Because of the surface that the artist created it, created for that apple. Or we might think that a bunny looks really soft in a painting because of the texture the artist created in a painting. Or if we had an actual bunny, we could be like, oh, that bunny is very soft. But if we don't, we just have a painting. It's the artist's job to create the idea, the texture to imply that the bunny might be soft for the viewer. And that is the all about, that is, how, that is texture when it comes to art. Creating this idea that a surface has a feeling or a sensation, a texture. All right, again, we can do this in sculpture, what a three-dimensional object might feel like or actually would actually have a texture to it. So in sculpture, what a surface feels like because we can feel it, right? This one's kind of a little bit rough because it's kind of straw or bamboo or something. I'm not sure. But in paintings, we can take a look and look at the skull of the painting and then decide on in our minds what the object might feel like based on the texture that has been given by the artist. So the painting of the cat, well the cat has lots of fur, it might be very soft because it looks like it has soft fur. So I'm thinking, well, it doesn't have spikes. It's not a spiky pokey cat. It doesn't have slime dripping off of it. So it's not a slimy cat. It doesn't have bumps. So it's probably not bumpy, but in my mind, because of having looked at the world, I've touched soft things before and I've touched hair. Uh, my brain makes that connection that this texture might be soft using what I know from experience plus what it looks like, I can make that connection. So what I know from experience plus what it looks like, I can make that connection. So artists often in their artworks use, uh, well, they try to recreate what something might look like. If I want to create a very soft fabric, so if I take my hoodie and I put it down, well, it's black, so it's not really great. But if I look at the hoodie, you can see all the soft, fluffy bits of my hoodie. So if I were to wanting to make a soft looking hoodie in an artwork, I would try to paint what that hoodie looks like to create the idea, a connection for my viewer. So when my viewer looks at my hoodie, they're like, oh, I've seen that before. That hoodie looks like my hoodie. And my hoodie is really soft. So I can make a connection and I can think, wow, that looks really soft. In the painting, that hoodie must be really soft if I were able to touch it. If I were able to touch it. And that is the element of our texture, creating the idea that if I were able to touch that surface, it would be blank. It would be soft. It would be smooth. It would be pokey. It would be prickly. It would be sharp. Oh, don't want to touch sharp. Or it might be 
slimy. And those are all different textures that a surface might have. So if you're painting a cat, you might want to create all the soft little hairs that cats have. So when your viewer of your artwork goes to look at it, they can make the connection that the cat is smooth based on their experience, what they know about cats and their hair being smooth and what it looks like in the artwork. They can take those two and make a guess that the cat is probably very smooth and soft. And that is the element of our texture. So we're going to try the elements of our texture today. We're going to create a bumpy bee, a bumpy bee. Yeah, I'm taking an adjective and a noun, bumpy bee, smashing it together to make a bumpy bee. So we're going to take a bee, which often is probably very smooth, but we're going to use line to help us to create texture that the bee is bumpy. Right? And we're then going to make a soft bunny artwork. So grab your art making mediums and join me in your studio and let's make some art. All right, we're gonna draw a bumpy bee. All right, so bumpy bee, we're gonna have our adjective, which is bumpy, right, describes a noun. And B is a person, place, or thing, so that's our noun. So bumpy B. Adjective describe our noun, which is our bee, bumpy bee. So we're gonna make a bumpy bee. So bees are normally smooth, so we're gonna create this idea that the bee's actually bumpy by adding different lines on it. Adding a circle for an eye. Let's add stripes and we'll make it curved because a B is curved. But now before we color, we need to make it bumpy. So we're gonna go around the outside and add some little bumps. And now we're gonna go on the inside and add little upside down U shapes to make bumps around 
the bee. Can even add it on the face. And now it's a puppy bee! Isn't that so cute? Okay, let's color it. Now I drew with my marker, so I'm gonna actually use wax crayon to color in the stripes, so that way I can still see my bumps. You can also use colored pencil or paint. I just wanted to be able to make it lighter so you can see it. soft bunny. Let's make some art. Okay, we're gonna make a soft bunny. Let's make a little bunny ear. And we're gonna add just some soft little kind of soft wavy or zigzag lines around and down. And we'll add another ear in behind. It's already so cute. I can already tell with these lines that it's gonna be soft. That's the power of line. Okay, we're gonna add another little inner ear and just this ear because this ear is facing away from us. Fluffy bunny tail with some wavy lines or curvy lines. Back leg, zigzag down and just let it go. I just keep my marker loose. And a little paw in the front, paw in the back. Upside down triangle for the nose with a curving line up and over, up and over. We'll add an eye and another with some upside down U's. Now we're going to make it softer, so we're going to do long zigzags to make it seem as long, sloth, soft, fluffy. Here to make it texture. We're 
ready to paint. We can grab our tempera paints. I even have some dried out paints on here. And I just add water to them to rehydrate. Even though they're temperas, it still works. Here's a little tip. See? You can go ahead and color or paint your artwork using your choice of paints. appreciation and subscribe to this channel if you complete these works and you snap a picture uh, with your phone whatever device make sure you so share them to social media and take me at Ms. Artastic or use the hashtag Ms. Artastic so that I can check out your completed works as well if you're looking for some more I art ideas that you can do at home or in a classroom grab my free guide up here it's super easy to download and check out lots of different art ideas that you can do at home anywhere anytime and if you're wanting to access my art lesson library full of hundreds of different art lessons make sure you head on over to artastickids.com and join the artastic kids online membership so you can make art anywhere anytime on any device using some really fun art mediums See you in the next episode.